God pleased. The President of the United States is really important to us. He is the Father of our nation. However, we all know that we have one absolute ruler above us and that is God. You see, a lot of politicians get big heads and think they are the new gods of our country. No way. That's why Trump stood in front of thousands of students at Liberty University and dropped this truth bombshell on them, in America, we don't worship government, we worship God. Amen. That's right, Trump just brought God back to our country. President Trump knows that the only reason for America being great in the first place is God. Our founders knew it, and to this day God is the key to our success. God's name is even in the Constitution four times for his sake. Trump continued, it is why our currency proudly declares, in God we trust and it is why we proudly proclaim that we are one nation, under God, every time we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Trump made another great point, faith in God is so important that our leaders swear in on a Bible and in God's name. This means only one thing. That our country still chooses the path of God and no one else. What do you think of this? Share your Just in Thray Gowdy sent Donald Trump the message he's been waiting to hear. South Carolina Rep. Thray Gowdy has received an interesting offer of President Donald Trump if he is interested in becoming the new director of the FBI. According to Fitz News, Gowdy has said yes. Here is what Fox News had to say about it. According to sources, the fourth term congressman said that he was interested in the position. Obviously, this is not a job offer but it is the first step to getting the nation's FBI post. Gowdy is definitely in the running, and according to a source, he's on the official short list. Gowdy is very qualified for the post and there is no denying that the Greenville, SC native has the skills to fix the FBI. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Eric Trump just came with an exciting announcement. Show your support of the Trump family. Our first family is in the spotlight every damn time. The reporters have been chasing them constantly and journalists do not use good words always when they write about them. That is why our first family is quite modest when it comes to interviews. Eric Trump had his first interview since his father took oath in office. Eric didn't fancy going out in public and giving interviews because liberals keep sneaking around in an attempt to bash the first family. Here we'd mention the attempts to shut down their businesses and brands. Remember what happened to Ivka's line? But, Eric decided to speak his mind and announced that the Trump Organization is still alive. We have an amazing team, Eric revealed in his interview. We have amazing people. We function incredibly well and we know what everybody does. There is no second guessing who is responsible for what. We act as a family unit and we have incredible loyalty, the president's son added, and everybody works incredibly hard and is incredibly good at what they do. Eric also talked about all the things that happened to his family after his father won the presidential elections. The biggest thing in the world is what he is doing, Eric said. And we would never want to do anything to remotely jeopardize that. So. We were the first people to raise our hands and say, you know what, let's not build anything, else, overseas. Eric and his brother Donald Jr. got in charge of the Trump Organization after their father became a president. I made the purchases of every single one of those golf course, and I rebuilt every single one of those properties, Eric revealed. I know their attics better than anybody and I know the mechanical systems better than anybody. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. CNN reporter forgot she was live on TV and exposed Obama paying them to be quiet. This is huge. CNN is maybe the biggest liberal media outlet. They have been doing nothing but making Hillary Clinton look like an innocent victim. And now even one of their own journalists has found that CNN is also taking bribes from foreign countries. The CNN reporter who blew the lid on this issue is none other than Amber Lyon, formerly employed by CNN and an award-winning reporter. Yesterday, Lyon blew the cover on the network's suspicious business practices. Lyon claims that CNN is paid by the U.S. government for reporting on some events, 
and not reporting on others. Lyon also told us that the network is a tool for the Obama administration to manipulate the information the American public gets to see. Lyon claims that Obama has been controlling what we know through CNN, her former employer. During Lyon's interview with Joe Rogan, she explained that she and another female colleague were part of a four-person team sent by CNN to Bahrain in 2011. Arriving in Bahrain, Lyon noticed something very odd the United States government had been supplying over $1 billion worth in weaponry including tear gas to the oppressive Bahraini regime looking to suppress popular protests in the country. Lyon was threatened by United States government personnel while staying on a U.S. Navy base in Bahrain. She was told not to report the incident, or face grave consequences. But instead of this, CNN officials told her to shut her mouth and not report anything of the Bahraini government's oppressive acts. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Just in. One of Obama's darkest scam secrets finally revealed. You can hide a lot of stuff, but you definitely cannot hide the truth. You can't lie the aim American public and prevent their freedom of informing. Obama's administration is known to spend a $36 million to secure the truth from being made public. As per the Associated Press, Obama and his administration have told the general population of this nation, journalists and every other person who has asked that they can't have what they were searching for. In more than 33 percent of those circumstances, Obama's administration was constrained to recognize that it has committed an error when tested in court with respect to their refusal to release the data. In the previous four years, claims documented by news associations under the Freedom of Information Act expanded to exceptional levels. The NY Times, the Associated Press, and the Center for Public Integrity were the most partial to question. Out of the $36.2 million in lawful expenses for comparative claims past year, the Department of Justice represented $12 million, the Homeland Security Department for $6.3 million and the Pentagon for $4.8 million. These three divisions represented over a large portion of the organization's aggregate records in 2016. The figures mirror the battles of the Obama organization amid the 2016 race to meet President Barack Obama's vow that it was the most transparent administration ever, regardless of wide acknowledgement of difficult issues adapting to demands under the data law. It got a record 788,769 solicitations for documents a year ago and spent a record $478 million noting them and utilized 4,263 full-time FOIA representatives crosswise over more than 100 government divisions and organizations. That was higher by 142 such workers the earlier year. It's misty yet how transparent the Trump administration will be with the press and others looking for data. Yet one thing is almost certain, it won't be as awful as Barack Obama's record. This was not surprising at all as we all know what kind of man Obama is. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Just in top Democrat senator has been nailed by President Trump. The Democratic Party has been caught up in a lot of corruption scandals. Also, there are some Republicans caught up with dirty hands. However, graft and corruption seems to follow liberals like a bad cough, you can clearly see that from Hillary Clinton and the email server scandal. Now, the focus is off Hillary for a minute and on to State Senator Nathaniel Thomas Oaks of Maryland. Apparently, he has been charged with honest services wire fraud. The Justice Department issued a statement, further. The affidavit alleges that September 22, 2016, the CHS made another $5,000 cash payment to Oaks in exchange for Oaks filing a bond bill with the Maryland Department of Legislative Services DLS, requesting $250,000 for the project, which Oaks filed later that same day. On November 21, 2016, the CHS received a forwarded email from other Oaks that had been sent to Oaks by a DLS employee, attaching a draft of the bill to establish a $250,000 bond to be used for the project. Nathaniel Thomas Oaks, from Baltimore, seems to have misused his position as a legislator to fill his own pockets. We can see that clearly.
What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Chuck Schumer said the one thing that shocked America. The Democrats will work with Trump under this condition. Two days ago, President Donald Trump had a word with the press about the new health care bill in his office in the White House. The Democrats were criticizing his idea about this new health care bill, but what's even worse, there were some Republicans too who opposed this idea. Nevertheless, in his briefing, Trump said, I think the losers are Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer because now they own Obamacare. They own it, they 100% own it, and this is not a Republican health care, this is not anything but a Democrat health care and they have Obamacare for a little while longer until it ceases to exist at some point in the near future. And he was so right. The Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer on Saturday dared to call the president incompetent. He said, they never reached out to us, they never talked to us, they never said how can we work together to make it better. The failure is of course completely among the Republicans, President Trump, and the Congress. They weren't even trying to get Democrats involved. And that is so not true. It is once again proven that the Democrats are doing their best to undermine the Congress and the new administration. So basically, Schumer gave his offer under one condition. He was asked if he is going to collaborate with President Trump on this new bill, to which he replied, if they take repeal off the table, absolutely. Instead of making a new health care bill, they want to fix Obamacare together. But it is only a matter of time to see what will be the outcome of the scenario if ever happens. What do you think of this? Share your opinion.